And Senator Tom Coburn of the great state of Oklahoma made some news uh, earlier this week at a town hall in Tulsa. He told his constituents that he would like to have a national constitutional convention to relook at the Constitution and maybe add some new amendments. Where did he get that idea? And we need to change it. And that's why I said the pretty outlandish statement is that I'm afraid not to have a constitutional convention. I don't think we have time to wait. And I think Mark Levin has done a great service to this country by raising those issues. Now, he's pretty harsh sometimes, but the fact <laughs> is is we have real problems and they need real solutions and that's one and nobody else is offering anything that's come comes close to it well he got that idea right there you heard it from you know, where he was mark it? levin he was in muskogee yeah right i mean that, he's talking to muskogeeans there yeah the new book is called the liberty amendments restoring the american republic mark levin joins us now you of course you hear him here on wmal from six to nine every night i know i do and well he can be a little harsh sometimes no, no, apparently no, no. to know me is to love me <laughs> <laughs> that's what i like to tell people yeah. uh mark levin that that has to actually give you a little little bit of uh, a little uh, uh, pump pump you up a little bit to hear a senator say yeah let's do this thing well it's nice to hear it and here's the deal it's very very interesting to hear what he said but under the process he has no role in it whatsoever because yeah. it completely bypasses congress and i just want to remind people and i say this every night it's in the book I, wherever i go it's not a constitutional convention the co the Constitution does not allow a constitutional convention it limits it it's an amendments convention no different than when Congress meets to propose amendments, and you still need three-fourths of the states to ratify. This is very important because I'm a constitutionalist. I revere the Constitution. It is not up for grabs, except, of course, with the federal government that doesn't adhere to it. <laughs> right. All right, thank you for correcting me on that. I think that people use convention, uh, constitutional convention just as sort of a, 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 a brand term, name, yeah. a generic term. Um, by the way, uh, Mark Levin is going to have a book signing uh, on Saturday, uh, tomorrow, at 10 a.m., Barnes & Noble at Tyson's Corner Mall in Virginia. I, it starts at 10 a.m. I mm. think you might want to get there early. Yeah, you always want to get there. They line up around the block yeah. for these uh, things. We're going to have a blast. This is a rally, baby. Yeah. <laughs> So now here's the biggest concern about having an amendment constitution yes. that I hear from people, and that is when you have a con – it's not like only Mark Levins are going to show up right. and people that agree with Mark Levin. What about the Organizing for America people, the ACORN people, the MoveOn.org people who will come with their own amendments? Well, here's the problem. The way the system works is the state legislatures will decide who the delegates are, not MoveOn.org, not uh, – Obama's other brown shirts and so forth. And if you look at the, the, the strength of the Constitutionalist, Originalist Tea Party, it's in the states. We have 27 Republican state legislatures right now. Uh, their strength is with the federal government, a top-down process where they have amended, eviscerated, evaded the Constitution in all the branches of the federal government, including the fourth one, the administrative state. So uh, it's very hard to see how they would control this process through the states. They control the process through population centers, through top-down, by evading the Constitution, through regulations, court decisions, mammoth pieces of federal legislation. And this is precisely the option that the framers gave us. The same framers who wrote all the rest of the Constitution wrote this provision specifically for the time in which the federal government or Congress becomes oppressive, like now. I know that you believe in many of the things that are in the existing Constitution, things like, oh, no, states' rights and following following, following the rule of law. Uh, well, I mean, the, the Supreme Court is the highest court in the land, and recently there was a decision that allowed states like Texas to go forward with a voter ID law. Right. And now we hear that the Department of Justice is going to sue them over that because they, they disagreed with the Supreme Court decision. Yeah, what we have now is utter lawlessness, and it's only going to get worse if something's not done about it, and what can we do about it? What's Congress going to do? Nothing. Uh, what's the court going to do? Rule again that, yes, voter ID is okay as long as it's not, uh, as long as it's reasonable? How many times do they have to rule that? Uh, and if, by the way, if we expect to get some kind of salvation out of the court, it's the same court that ruled in Obamacare and amended the Constitution and changed that law to impose that on us, and they say, oh, it's the law of the land, you can't do anything about it. The federal government is out of control. The separation of powers isn't working. They're all stomping all over each other, and we sit back and we read George Will and Krauthammer and others saying how lawless the president is, how outrageous Supreme Court decisions are. And, I, you know, in my show, I'm sure yours, people are calling and saying, Mark, what can we do about this? Yeah. How many, how many, what, the list of horribles is infinite. Now, what can we do about it? And I'm saying 
If we open our minds and pay attention to our Constitution, we can reclaim our heritage. It won't be easy. It'll be difficult. But it took us 100 years to get here, and we ought to start reversing course. Mark, I got one more for you, and it has to do, I mean, you're, you're lucky you live in the Commonwealth of Virginia, but those of us who live up in Maryland. Uh, it's only a short car ride uh, Listen, I'm telling you, I think about it every day. Uh, you know, the Second Amendment and the laws that have been passed in Maryland are onerous, and there's a guy in Maryland who says, I want to have a discussion about Maryland's law, which ca- calls for a duty to retreat. In a situation, in other words, you don't have the right to stand your ground. In Maryland, you have a duty—a duty, a duty to hide—to retreat. Well, what, what can I say? I mean, uh, Maryland is completely out of control, and Maryland will one day collapse from its taxes, from its from its idiot uh, laws, uh, from these crazy politicians, and so forth. The great thing about federalism, the great thing about the state, is you don't have to live there. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, Maryland is depopulating itself. One of the reasons why Virginia is becoming bluer and bluer is because the liberal locusts from Maryland who've chewed up that state are now moving to my state and starting to chew up my state. All right, and hopefully some of them will be there at Tyson's Corner Mall tomorrow at 10 a.m. at the Barnes & Noble. No, The liberal well, locusts, i got to remember that. One. Well, you, you, you mentioned, Mark Levin, uh, about how people call the show and say, what can we do? And this is what I love about your book, The Liberty Amendment, so much, which, by the way, is the number one of, uh, of all the nonfiction categories on the New York Times bestseller list. Congratulations for that. Thank you, sir. But, but uh, you know, talk radio gets a bad rap. You get a bad rap. A lot of our colleagues get a bad rap that it's just a guy complaining and ranting and raving. This is this is a solution oriented book. You're actually saying here's what can be done and what we can do. So my question to you is, how does this process move forward now? What how how can the Liberty Amendments and the and the uh, Amendment Constitution that you propose actually be taken into action? Well, what I do and what I do with the books and behind the microphone is push the idea that the framers push. So more and more people who are activists, who do have groups, who are starting groups, who want to run for office, or at a minimum over the breakfast table or dinner table to talk to their family and explain these things. Uh, Ideas do have consequences. I'm being contacted by scores of groups that want to get involved, and I tell them, do what you would normally do. Talk to your state delegates, state senators. If you're in a really, really dark blue state, you know, do the best you can. But I don't believe in static economics, and I don't believe in static politics. We don't need every single dark blue state. We have 27 right now, without even trying, 27 Republican state legislatures. If the idea takes off first, it's the idea of representative government, it's the idea of consensual government, of federalism, of unraveling the professional career ruling class in Washington, D.C., so we can reclaim our heritage and breathe life back into the Constitution. If these ideas, you know, they take hold, I think anything's possible. It's going to take time, but anything's possible. How many states needed? You need 34 for the convention and 38 for uh, for ultimate ratification. And just the would. legislatures, right? Not a, the governor doesn't That's have to right. sign off on it. Just state legislatures, no wow. governor, no. Already Congress. 27 in hand. All right, Mark Levin, always great to have you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And once again, the book signing is tomorrow, Barnes and Noble at Tyson's Corner Mall. That is uh, at 10 a.m. Get there early and uh, get your book signed by the great one. God bless. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks.